Guys, I hope you are well. William here recording from beautiful Zurich, Switzerland. As React Native developers, we often get distracted when using our phones. For every delightful user experience, we are wondering how we would do it in React Native. Well, now, thanks to or maybe because of Remotion, the same thing happens when we watch our favorite show on Netflix. The title sequence you've just seen was entirely created with Remotion using React Native Web and SVG. And I had the chance to sit down with Johnny Berger, the creator of Remotion, to discuss how to build such animation. Before we jump into the discussion, I would like to show you some of the techniques I've used to build such sequence title. The first step was to prepare all the assets using Figma. For instance, in the first title animation, there are a lot of things appearing and disappearing. I've built an SVG that contains all of the elements, pasted it into a React component, and then animated the element visibility accordingly. And then there are some elements which are animating. Here I would paste the SVG path from Figma to an SVG path editor, find which points need to be updated, and build the animation accordingly. The icon roulette was simply done with Flexbox. We translate every n plus 1 or n plus 2 accordingly, and then we make sure to hide the overflow from the visible box. The code is available on GitHub, link in the video description. Let's jump into the discussion with Johnny Berger. I will see you in the next video. And until next time, happy hacking. So basically, I took this title and then I added on top of it all the elements that will need to appear. So this box will need to appear, this one. We, we have the reversed A that will need to appear. So I created basically a Canva with all the elements at their positions that will need to appear within the, the... And so these are all the elements. And then what I did is that I actually did an SVG export, and then you can keep the ID attribute. So when you paste it into your code, you know which path is which, because I marked it here. I have rectangle bottom, rectangle middle, and this is where, I mean, here the naming is not so good, but this is where you need really good naming because you have so many layers, so many layers, yes. so many events. Um, and, and just in general, I must say, I wouldn't have come up with um, creating this in Figma or, or Sketch. Um, but now that I see these commands, flatten SVG and then copy each character individually, I think this is incredible pow incredibly powerful. And I uh, must also implement this technique into my workflow because, yeah, that's uh, it's nice because then you can also, for example, work with non-coders and they can prepare some static assets before you animate them. Um, I never knew that uh, Figma and Remotion would like um, have a nice harmony that yeah. you can combine them. That's really the power of Remotion is that you can use anything. So suddenly, instead of having only this niche of graphic motion designers that are using one specific software, now anyone, any talent using any software, Figma, Illustrator, Photoshop, uh, OpenGL, you name it, you can work with them to build incredible motion graphics. So suddenly, the pool of talent uh, of skills available to build motion graphics becomes infinite almost. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense to me now. Okay. Because I wasn't aware of this Figma thing. I don't even have a Figma account. I will create one today probably. Figma is amazing. It's incredible. I can only recommend it. The SVG exports, they try to make it simple. So you need to be careful, they, they make some shortcuts and the export is not necessarily how you would like it to be. You don't have a lot of control over it, but also Figma is extend, you can build plugins. So maybe you can build your own export plugin and have it. Um, and so I, so I had my assets prepared on Figma and then I created essentially three sequences. So the first one, and it's always the same component, right? So I have the love, death, react component. 
but then I use it in three uh, sequences. The first one is the fade-in, and here it's a dark mode, so we have it in the text is white and the background is black. And here I have the still property to say don't animate anything because at the beginning of the sequence, nothing moves. But here we discussed, actually, we know already there is probably a better solution for it. Because here, basically, it's a property, and I have to check oh, what's the frame. But if the frame is still, it's zero, right? So if I go in title, I think you see I do current frame, and the frame is, if it's still, is zero. But we know there is a cleaner way to do it, because you could wrap it into a still component that overrides the context value for the frame. Yes, indeed. We are actually uh, drafting up a component. We thought about calling it freeze. And uh, you can freeze the frame number to a, to a number that you like. Um, Makes perfect but sense. it's nice that you showed you don't have to wait for it to be implemented. No, you no. You can just use, uh, you can hack around it for, uh, for now. Absolutely. So first sequence, dark mode, then we go immediately to the, so dark mode is false, still is false, we start to animate. And so what is cool here, thanks to sequence, is that this component here, when it starts animated, is at frame zero. So it means you can run the same animation on different places of your uh, animation, total animation. So it makes it like super reusable. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's uh, smart reusable thing you did here and so let and then last part is that so here we have the the elements and we have the title and here what i did is that i marked all i went frame by frame so five seven nine ten eleven twelve and i tried to mark events pasted the svg from figma and then based on the event tweaked the value and so we have some interpolations, we have some, um, for the rectangle, the circle becomes to zero. So here we use interpolate from, from remotion. And I think I'm not done completely, but we can have a look. So we have the fade in here, pretty straightforward. So maybe yes. here I use the, um, good. the easing maybe is a bit different. And then so you Ooh. see, it should match frame by frame the, so let me just replay it. It's crazy, by the way, this is a 4K Canva and it runs in real time on my laptop, no problem. And it's not even the M1. <laughs> wow, yeah, impressive. I guess because, uh, I guess because free motion is so great, but also because the composition is so simple. Um, wow, okay, so it looks good. So to it be, yeah. And you, you hit all the details, like the shadows, the, the blue and orange shadows on mm -hmm. these blobs and... The, um, so the radial gradient is interesting. So when I applied this gradient, it looked way too circular. But here with these colors, it's, it's not so obvious. Maybe if I pick red. And then we can blur on top of it. And so suddenly it becomes smoother, but then you need to, you see also the corners have been blurred. So you need to, uh, so now I can just you use a solid, up a little bit or? solid fill with the color. I don't know which color it was, but, and I can remove the blur. So uh, ah, wow, that makes smart. sense. Yeah. Uh, no, wait. Oh yeah, like this. Oh, okay. I see. Wow, I'm a fool for not using Figma then. It's oh, I'm, I didn't realize you were not using it. Now it's uh, so. Then I'm glad this was worth it. Because yeah, I didn't realize I was uh, missing out. If we look at the background, uh, oops, wrong one. So we have this one here because of the blur below. So you see here because of the blur, we have this effect. So we get the nice smoothed. Radial gradient, but then we need to add like some background to remove this. Yeah. Amazing. It's like I'm always surprised by 
like in what kind of different ways and workflows um, you can make these videos. Um, and I just realized that, you know, Figma is like, just like perfect combination because you can export everything into web technologies um, that probably, yeah, you can, you can make videos even faster with that because you don't need to write out everything in code and uh, you can just animate specific elements. The thing here is that they move so fast frame by frame. So it's interesting because when we write regular code, a Re React code for web apps or apps, we when you prototype, it's always a trade-off between going fast and factorizing things. So not writing code, right? You always need to be on the trade-off. And then once you reach maybe the functionality you build, then you factorize everything. You try to find a model to make like a, a general case and so on. And here, because also it's like frame by frame and some frames might be like so different, you try to find a way that is generic. So you, you've you seen in, in the code, I have like uh, all these events. And so if we go here in title and I try to to have one component for every frames of the animation of the title animation and trying to make it generic. But at some point also, it's like maybe for prototyping, it's faster if you do it it's only a couple of frames. You do it really frame by frame in Figma just at the beginning. And then maybe you try to factorize. I mean, it's the same here now. I have this huge component. Maybe I should uh, factorize it like one component per line. And it's not a factorizing, but uh, make it it's smaller, maybe a, a little bit easier to digest. Always a trade-off, but in, uh, in programming in general, but with remotion, because it's like frame by frame, uh, there is potentially even more copy and paste and so on that can happen, right? To try to get to achieve the result and then we see how we can make the code cleaner. Amazing. So yeah, I learned something new and I also learned about the series. So is it any good? Yeah, it's pretty good. All right. Soon signing up for a Figma and Netflix account. Do you know um, Black Mirror? Another one I missed out on. Oh, wow. Okay, but it's, it's nice. Maybe that's the secret. I think we just uh, found out the secret of your productivity. No Netflix? Yeah, it might be. I mean, it's amazing. Well, you know, I'm happy to uh, trade off some of my productive time with Netflixing. And I know a people they have, I know a lot of people they have the problem. They've already seen everything. So, even though I've probably missed out on so much, the the good thing is that I've yet so much to see. <laughs>